Got my Grandstream shirt on because we're going to talk about Grandstream stuff today. Fresh cup of coffee. A lot of people talk about having their network gear in the cloud or local. I like both. I prefer the cloud myself because it's just easier. Only if it has two-factor authentication, then I'll do it. I like the Grandstream GWN.cloud website. It's got 2FA, it works great. But a lot of people say, I don't want the cloud version, I want a local host version or a local version. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do that because Grandstream does that. Very, very easy. You do need an ESXi box. There are other platforms you can install it on, but I'm gonna do it on ESXi and it's very easy to do. So I'm gonna show you this. So first, we need to go to the Grandstream website. Here's my uh, ESXi box, but let's go to the Grandstream website. On here, we need to go to support and then tools. In here, there's a OWA file we can download, which is right there. And I'm going to use the Ubuntu version because if I have problems with it, at least I know more about Ubuntu than I do CentOS and Elma, whatever Elma is. So I've already downloaded this file because it takes about 20 minutes to go because it's a 1.5 gig file. So once you've downloaded it, it's pretty easy. I'm going to open up the instructions guide here too. And there's a user guide only for the OVA. So I'll open up for that so we can look through it. Let's have a quick glance. So we can download the PDF or you can just surf through the page here. Right here. Deploying the GWN manager on VMware ESXi. Download the OVM file. Create a new virtual machine. Drag the file. Next for the uh, data store where he wants to live. I'm just gonna use all the defaults. And then press next again for adding the um, options that it asks. We'll go over that. And then push finish. After that, you're done. You basically just have to do a walkthrough, find the IP address and set up your username and password. So let's do that. So I've logged into my ESXi host. We'll go up here and we'll go create register a VM. We're going to deploy a virtual machine from the OVA file that we downloaded. We'll go next. We're gonna call this local GWN and then we'll select the file. We'll go to C, temp downloads, wherever you put your file. We'll go this. This takes a couple minutes. So as that's booting and doing, we are going to uh, VM network. You might wanna make sure that you're on the right network because some people use multiple VLANs and multiple networks on your um, ESXi box. This is just for demo purposes. This box doesn't do anything because it's a virtual lab. And make sure you correct the right network. So then we'll go next. And then we'll go finish. It's gonna take a couple minutes. As that happens, we got ourselves an access point that we're gonna adopt in there. This is the what version is this? 7660LR, meant to go outside, works well too. I'm gonna to plug it in. As it's doing its thing, this VM will start building. Now, as we're working here, there's a note, right? I had to look for this the last time I played with this. The username default when you get the VM built, it will need a username and password. This is needed so you can find out the IP address unless you go into your DHCP server and find it, but it is right here. Username is GWN, password is GWN Manager, capitalized GWN. And then after that, we will find this picture right here and we'll find our IP address, but make sure you put HTTPS and 8443. You need that, but you can't get in. So let's check on our VM. It looks like it's right there. It's ready to go. Is it booted? Yep, auto booting. And just like that, it's up and running. So let's click on here. GWN for the username. GWN underscore manager. And we're logged in. Pretty easy to do. Now we need to know the status of it so we can find this IP address. So we're supposed to type in GWN slash GWN status. So let's try that. 
and it tells us our IP address is at 192.168.80.125. Sweet, let's do that. 443, forget 8443. And there it is. Let's walk through this. Need coffee first though. We'll click advanced. We'll go next. Welcome to you. Welcome to the GWN manager. And this is what we're going to use to walk through. So we'll click start. I'm in Canada. It's already found the time zone. We'll create a user account. We'll call this uh, Jason's lab. Password none at no, actually we'll just use mine. Jason at Jason's lab.ca. Next. It hasn't found any devices yet because this has to adopt. It's ready to be adopted, but we'll do that in a minute. We're not going to create any SSIDs for now. Okay. Jason's lab and sign in. When you sign in, it pushes you through a couple little bubbles to show you what are, what's going on. So we got VPN, traffic management, new features, new features again, a floor map tool. Now I'm going to log into my other GWN cloud that they give you that's in the cloud and show you the difference. Ah, two-factor authentication. Notice how the dashboard looks like this. But if we go to the local one, dashboard, it looks very, very similar. And it is. The only thing I found when I played with this before is you can't manually add a device. It's only by auto adopting. What I mean by that is if I go like this and go devices on mine and I go to add, I can type in the name of it, the Mac address and the special password that comes with these devices. With the cloud version, you can't do that. Watch. So we'll go back to the cloud devices. We can only click adopt, but if you look right here, we got a da add in the cloud version and then the local version is only adopt. If we click adopt, we can see my device. So let's try it. Success, it added it, no problem, because it's local and we're plugged into the same network. But in the cloud, we have to, excuse me, manually do that. And I understand that's for security because you don't want people to just auto adopt your devices. This one, when you add it to the cloud, Again, you have the Mac address and the password. There's a secret password on all of these. Even if you factory reset it, it will go back to this right here. It's the only thing that I found that I didn't like about that on here. So we have our device added. We should be able to create a Wi-Fi SSID and it should work. Um, Wi-Fi status says it's already enabled. There it is. Pretty simple to see that. And it works. As you can see, extremely easy to use and, and set up as long as you're using ESXi. There's probably other ways of setting it up, but I like doing simple stuff. So quick video for you guys, how to set it up. Um, I'm gonna be going over more videos like this, uh, adding the access points and switches and stuff. So stay tuned. Hopefully that helped you out and uh, we'll go from there. Questions or comments, let me know. And uh, don't forget to drink coffee first thing in the morning. Mm. See you guys later.